Hey everybody, my name is Bill Ward from Black Sabbath and you're watching the Kerrang! Podcast. How does it feel to be releasing all this music again and you know, judging how some of the songs are like almost forty years old. Um, I think it's I think it's okay that it's been released. Um, I think to uh, the uh, to the uh, ardent Sabbath fan, I think it, they'll, they might they'll, they'll find some interest in this um, because of the you know some of the outtakes and some of the various things that have you know literally never been heard before. So in that sense, I think it's. Um, I think it's uh, it makes it for a fairly interesting package. Yeah. There are some things personally that I don't. Uh, but when I, I I heard all of the package myself uh, back last August, and there was some things that I was kind of like iffy on. The quadrophenia I was a little iffy on. Um, but uh, for the most part, I think uh, very much uh, for the for uh, the Sabbath fan, uh, I think there's some very there's some interesting uh, uh, new things. Yeah, inside this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what what's your take on some of the remastered um, albums that you've that you're releasing? Um, uh, do you mean on the actual on the actual yeah. the original stereos? Yeah. Uh, they sound fine. Yeah. I think everything's. Uh, I think everything's good. I've listened to them um, briefly, so I don't have a whole a lot of technical data yeah. kind of thing up here. Yeah. Um, but everything sounds pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what's what's the sort of favourite Sabbath album you've played on? Hmm. <laughs> the hardest question. Tough questions, yeah. right? That's that's so hard. So that's so difficult. Yeah. To to answer a question, because there there, there isn't. I don't have a, a most favourite. Um, the first three albums. Yeah. If I can go that way. Yeah. The first three albums. Uh, um, are part of an era uh, that, on a personal level, in my for me, in my life, were just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it was just uh, such a, a brilliant time. Um, we were constantly touring, and uh, I thought that we made three great albums. Bam, bam, bam. And you created a, a whole new genre, really. Uh, sort of pioneered yeah. the heavy metal sound. Yeah, I, I you know, the the music is. Uh, was a, was the beginning of a new era. I think it op it, it was the crucible uh, of something that was to be way bigger than us, way larger than us, and was to take on a whole new uh, area as far as industry is concerned, and as far as uh, you know, uh, other bands being influenced by us in later years. Yeah. So it absolutely became you know, it became a monster. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What. Which bands of the current crop of new acts have caught your attention that you you can kind of hear a Sabbath influence in? Huh. Um, uh, current bands, I, I I actually know a lot of the current bands. Yeah. And all of them uh, have uh, either listened to Sabbath at one point or another, or are continuing to be you know very endearing Sabbath fans. Um, to name some. Uh, Start with In Flames, Slayer, uh, Slipknot, um, uh, Demu, Bugger, yeah. uh, Typo Negative. Uh, I'm trying to get as many names in yeah. as I can in. That's just a, a small cross section mm -hmm. of a whole lot of people. Um, there's a, there are many bands that Sabbath has to thank, and I thank them. They don't have to, but. We all, uh, or at least, yeah, we, we all acknowledge the uh, how how nice and how uh, and how um, it's been to have this almost renewal in uh, in the band in, in interest in the band Black Sabbath yeah. because there are so many bands that have been influenced by that, and it's, so it's a continuum of news all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you feel that your lives and relationships were changing as uh, Black Sabbath was getting bigger? 
Mm. Some things were good. Yeah. Some things weren't so good. Um, um, what were the good things? The good things uh, was that we were able to continue playing music. Yeah. We were able to continue playing bigger and better stadiums to more people. We were meeting more people. Uh, we, we were becoming more affluent in music. Uh, I think we were, we were becoming better musicians. Um, we took more risks. We moved out of our original selves into yeah. new areas of music. Um, but there was, uh, as, as we were in our mid-twenties, as, as we became uh, more separated from each other. Right. Up until then, we'd been uh, like the like the three musk the four musketeers, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. uh, so when we started to become married and living different, we, we now we could afford to live in a house. Right. Our houses were relatively close, but we started to live away from each other. Whereas before, we were always living on top of each other yeah. or in the same hotel room, literally. Right. Now we were separated a little bit. Those are some of the downside things. Although we still remain very family-like, very, uh, very tight. We would see each other all the time. If we were on downtime, yeah. uh, we, would, we would still see each other all the time. So, yeah. uh, you know, we were still very much together. I think um, for me personally, uh, I started to enjoy the excesses. Yeah. Um, I had no idea what to do with money. Um, I didn't understand how money worked or what it was supposed to do. And so I, uh, you know, I just took off on the wall ride. Yeah. And uh, for myself, I, um, I uh, used, uh, everything that I did was in excess. Right. I was addicted to everything. So everything was just completely, you know, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to be up, if, if we were drinking for, for, there was a party that night, I had to be up for five nights partying. Right. You know, things like that. Yeah. Everything was excessive. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a minute tip of the iceberg of some of the downside. Yeah. Of, uh, wealth or fortune or fame yeah you know. when did you realize that you had to make a change in your life uh, you know, well to I was told to make a change in my life when I was about 22 uh, that was when I got hepatitis uh, C right um, that was from uh, some bad drugs doctors told me everybody around me who loved me told me and but uh, I couldn't I, uh, I had nothing inside me that would say, okay, I'm gonna do all that mm -hmm. good stuff. Yeah. Uh, it took me uh, several years later before I crashed into a wall, um, literally, uh, not, not, lit not literally, I'm sorry, but when I crashed into uh, a wall inside me. Yeah. And that's when I knew that uh, I, I was literally dying. Right. That's all. On uh, the 1976 album, Technical Ecstasy, yes. uh, you sing on It's All Right. Yes. Um, what made you want to get from behind the uh, drum kit to take the mic for that song? I was, I was actually more encouraged by the other guys, right. to be honest. Um, and more encouraged by Ozzy. Uh, he, had, uh, he really liked the song. And um, we, were, we were looking at what songs to put on the album, what might work, yeah. what, what might not work. And uh, I think it was Oz that suggested doing that. Um, and it just came from, it was, it was as simple as that. Right. Because yeah. I understand Guns N' Roses used to cover it a lot in their early career. Uh, they, yes, they did, and I heard a recording of it. What did you think about it? You know what? I was, I was very impressed. Yeah. And also I was very honoured. Uh, since then I've met a number of the guys that were in the original Guns N' Roses and um, you know they we're whenever we meet each other we always sit down and have a have nice conversations and stuff and uh, yeah. you know so I I, uh, I respect them and honor them and uh, so that was a nice surprise I didn't I didn't know that it happened right I only I only recently found that out I think it was Giza that told me that a few years ago and then I Somebody played me the record, and it's like, oh wow, I didn't know. Yeah. So awesome. yeah. If you could do the photo shoot for the sabotage artwork again, um, would you remember your trousers so you didn't have to wear yeah. those red tights? <laughs> <laughs> I still wear I still wear Aussie's underpants. Yeah. 
those, those checkered, you can see the checked underpants. Yeah. Those are Aussies. All oh, right. <laughs> and and um, that's why he's wearing that long gown. Right. Because underneath that, he's got no underpants on. <laughs> and those are my wife's tights. Yeah. What, so, what did you say to that? <laughs> sorry? What did you say to that when you... My wife? Yeah. She took. She was there at the shoot. All right. She just took them off and gave them to me. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, uh, but next time we do a sabotage shoot, I will remember to bring my pants. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're all very grateful. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, you just wanted to say that, no. like, we're all very grateful. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do you feel about the legacy that Sabbath of given, you know, Mel? I feel really good about it. I hope that uh, we can honour it in a, um, in, a, uh, in, a, in a humble and... Uh, and uh, respectful way. Yeah. Yeah, because metal music is uh, just so important. And, um, uh, you know, from, its, from, from, the, from the youngest of its players that are playing it right now, back to, you know, some of the original sources of heavy metal. Yeah. And um, so uh, I, I'd like to be able to be, feel very honorable towards my fellow musicians and to uh, metal fans, period. Yeah. Um, I, uh, there's no place for ego or big-headedness yeah. or a rock star in this. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it really is the, com the, 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 um, the common place here is music. Mm -hmm. It's the music. And that speaks for itself. Mm -hmm.